So this is a quick tutorial on how to splice two images together to make on the Epson 2720, which is a standard format. It's not a wide format, so it only prints um, up to eight and a half inches wide, excuse me. It only prints up to eight and a half inches wide. You can do the eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14 if you're using the um, individual papers, or you can also use the sublimation rolls, which are eight and a half by 47 inches long. I designed this in Cricut Design Space. There's two different ways you can get this out of Design Space. You can either do using a snippet tool and you can just simply grab it and grab a screenshot of it. Basically, that's all you're doing, just like that. The other way is you can reduce it down to the size that Cricut allows you to print, which is 6.75 by 9.25. Those, both your height and your width, have to be under that number. So what I'm gonna do then is adjust the width to 6.75. And now we are good to go. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make it. And I'm gonna print, but I'm not gonna print a physical copy. What I'm gonna do is do this drop down and print to a PDF. Turn your bleed off, don't forget to do that. So when you print to the PDF, it's basically saving that as a, a PDF file, but you can use that as an image. And then we are done in Design Space, so we'll go ahead and close that. Now I have um, Silhouette Studios open. This is where I do a lot of my printing when I want larger sheets. Sure, I can go ahead and do the printing out of Design Space, but it's going to require me to break it into at least three or four different pieces. And the trick, the key is you wanna work smarter and not harder. So find a program that is gonna allow you to print something to the max size of the paper that you're using. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set up our mat. And our mat size needs to be 12.25 wide by 16.5 tall. That's basically the final image is going to be this size. You can see this little line. Let me try to zoom in here. You can see this line that's coming right here. This is your print border. Because we have print border selected over here, it's showing us what the where the paper is going to fall, where the paper is going to be in our design. So let's go ahead and load our design. And we're going to want to resize it. So 12.25 is going to be our width. And then 16.5 is our height. So let's go into our page setup. And we want to change this to landscape because you can see that our line has now changed to go outside of that. And it's not going to move. Okay, we're just going to rotate our picture. That's just going to be easier. And we're going to bring half of it you can see that if we put the bottom half to where it lines up with our print border we have just above her nose the bridge of her nose is where it's falling and you got to remember that the 2720 does not print borderless so it's going to pull back just a little bit on that then if we bring our design this way to confirm where this side's going to be it's gonna 
be and I can't get that to be perfect so it's going to be just at the above the tip so we have a little bit of space right here but it's not enough to give me a uh, comfort of making sure that that connects so I'm actually going to drop my size down just a little bit So this also this brought it up like quite a bit. Now we're like on the bridge of her nose. And then if we check the other side, we're below her nose. So that's going to be plenty of space for us to be able to um, successfully splice this. So I will go ahead and we'll do the top half and we'll go to print. And then we want to open up our preferences. And I'm going to select one of my profiles that I have saved already. This one is mirror sub eight and a half by 14 premium matte setting. And it's, it's setting to orientation is gonna print on portrait, which is what we want. And then I'll go ahead and print. Okay, now we're gonna print our bottom half. So we'll just grab our design and we're gonna move it over so it falls just above the other side of our print border. And then we'll hit print. And confirm everything's within the print border line. Select our saved profile again and OK and print. So for this design, we need it to be 12 inches wide by 13 inches tall. So we'll go ahead and 12 inches wide by 13 inches tall. And we're gonna change our page setup to print portrait again. Actually, we'll do landscape on this one. Okay, so you can see our print border here. So let's go ahead and add our design. And this is a very big design, so hopefully I don't crash my computer. Okay, got it resized. I had to find it because it saved it way down in the bottom corner. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get as much of it as I can in my top. And I think I might actually make, make my um, design board a little bit wider because I seem to be falling off of it. Even though it says my design is 12 inches wide, you can see that here, 12 wide, and my design board is 12 wide, but it seems to be falling off of it, and I don't know if it's because of all these little flecks and all of that. So I guess if you do it that way, it does fit, but I don't want to risk losing some of it, so I'm gonna make my width and my height just one inch bigger on both. And it's okay to do that because you're going by, as I was showing you before, you're going by this print paper is what you're actually going by. You're going by your print border. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the top half. And you can see that our line for our paper is here and it's going right about through the teeth area. So then when I move it up and do the other half, it's gonna go right above the skull. So I'm gonna have a lot of extra 
And in order to not waste ink, you can go ahead and kind of find a center point that you want to go by. So if we were to go by like maybe somewhere in the center of his eyes, and we will go ahead and take for the bottom half, we're going to bring it just to the top of his eye. And then for the top half, we'll bring it just to the bottom of his eye. So then the center of his eye will be our connection point, And that's the pieces that will kind of cut out. So let's go ahead and print this one. And we want to make sure that our orientation is on landscape. And we're going to do mirror sub eight and a half by 14. And you can see that that flipped over to portrait. You want, that's because of my profile. I have it saved on, on portrait. So you want to just change, if that's what you're doing, you want to just change that back to landscape. No big deal. Then I'm going to move up and grab, as we said, we were going to put it, the bottom half was at the bottom of his eye. So now the top half, or I'm sorry, the top half was at the bottom of his eye. The top, the bottom half we want to put at the top of his eye. So I've got it placed where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and print. Okay, so we have our design, both sheets printed. So if you follow the steps of what I showed you the first time, the, in the first part of this, where you make sure that you have, bring this in here, make sure that you have some duplication between your two images because you don't want to cut off to where you're having a little gap there and you don't want to have too much like if we were to just take this and line it up and lay it over it besides that white line of course so just ignore that white line but if we were to do that we would have all of that ink on the underside that's going to end up doing a blowout and a blowout is basically what it's doing is this ink that's going to be on the underside is going to get heated and it needs to go somewhere. And because it's not touching the fabric, it can't go to the fabric. So what it does is it kind of seeps out underneath that line. And that's how you end up getting a line in your splices. If you have too much of an underlay. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just cut one of these because I just want the white off and be aware that if you have a very heavy ink print it could potentially still be wet so just be careful with that and you can use a paper cutter like one of these but make sure if you're using one of these that you have one that actually has a blade in it and not not like a um, like a little plastic piece that kind of cuts it. Some of those cheaper ones, it's not really a true blade and it can leave rigid areas, rigid spots. That's why I like using a rolling cutter for splicing. So then what you're gonna do is now that you have one of your white lined pieces cut off, you basically are going to find where your connection point is. So you're gonna kind of look throughout your image. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So you're gonna to wanna to find little things and pieces within your image that are kind of duplicated. So you can see here, there's a little triangle on this piece and there's a little triangle on that piece. So if I bring this down far enough, I know that, okay, there's my set point right there. 
And you can kind of do the same on this side. Find some things that are similar and just kind of line them up. So there's our lined up image. I am going to just tape the sides just to keep this in the right spot so I don't lose my area where I lined up. Now what I want to do is mark the under part, the under page. So basically all of this that you're seeing here, all of this extra, we want to get that cut off because remember that's where your blowout happens, okay? So there's two ways you can do this. You can either, if you have enough white space on the sides that you can cut off, you can either mark just a little spot because you're gonna cut that off anyway so it doesn't matter that it's there, but you can mark a little spot there so you know that's where the second piece, the top piece is gonna overlay it. Sorry, I'm out of screen there. So I have my second mark here. The other option that you can do is when you have it tacked on the, on the ends like this with some tape, this is, the, this is the one that I don't really like doing this method because you could potentially scratch your other piece. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of take it and lightly, carefully fold this over so you can see where it lays and then you can mark on the inside and then that will be cut off. So that, I, like I said, I don't like that method. So now I have my lines marked, but this is, remember, this is where, this is where this sheet, let me zoom this back out. This is where our top sheet laid just over it. So we wanna back it just a little bit on this side of those lines. So you can see that I have just a little bit of where the line, where the top paper will sit on top of it or over it. So now, yes, you have to reline that up again, but you kind of have those little lines there as, as a key point, so it helps. Okay, so I have it set again, and now I'm going to carefully turn this over, and we're gonna tape the back side of this. And then we'll go ahead and either tear or cut around this, whichever you prefer. Okay, so while the heat press is heating up, I can go ahead and do this one so that way you can see a second process of lining up. So this one is actually got some really nice points to be able to use as your connection points. We have that little triangle dip there in the nose and then the top one and then some of the leopard prints, they're really good for identifying your match spots.
So there's our second one. And this was, remember, 13 inches tall by 12 inches wide. Okay, so while our heat press is heating up, I'm going to show you how to do a pressure test and a heat test because those are two very important things when you're trying to get everything perfect. A lot of people will post questions of why do I have these imprint lines? Why is my image not bright enough? It feels like not enough if the ink pushed over. A lot of times it's because your pressure was not enough or your pressure was too much. And then when it comes to the heat, a lot of people will over process or overheat their garment or else not put enough heat in it because they're trusting that the actual heat press is heating to what you're setting it at. My heat press runs hot. So I know that I have to set it lower. If I want it to be at 400, I have to set it at about 385 or so in order to get a true 400. And I'll show you how to do both of these. So we'll start with the paper pressure test to be able to get your, your pressure good. So you're just basically taking a standard sheet, like a normal piece of paper, and you're gonna tear it in half, the lengthwise. And you're gonna set it right here in your front. Drop down your plate, and see, I can pull this out. That means that my pressure is not enough. You want to be able to not be able to pull that out. So I'm gonna tighten it a little bit, drop it down again. Let's take our other half here and we'll use the other half. So there I felt a little bit of budging so that actually is the spot where I'm going to leave. And you also, if you want to really test good pressure, you can do all four corners as well. A little scrap that we have there. And you just kind of want to test the same thing to make sure that all four corners are good with pressure as well. Okay, so our pressure is good. And that's usually where you can leave your pressure. You can mark it if you want to with a marker or something so you know that that's the spot where you need to come back to or else you just leave it there and if you're doing thicker garments, you can back it up a little bit. You don't really need to tighten it for thinner garments because that's a piece of paper that we just did. So your pressure is, that's your base basically. You can look at it as that's your base. Okay, so for our heat test, this is the heat gun that I have. It is a thermal heat gun. And what it does is you basically are just shooting it at something, you're aiming it at something. You can see the red dots that show up on, on the mat there. That's what I'm aiming it at. And you can see that that is 145 degrees. Like my butcher paper over there, 83, 88, and Yep, you can even do, I am 90 degrees right now. The heat press is set right now for 368. It's, the temp is 368. I have it set for 385, so we still haven't hit our set our temp. But it's 368 is what the heat press is showing. So if I check my heat press, you can see that it actually is 373 in that corner, 365, 370 in that corner. My center is 380, 385. My top here is 405. So I'm already at 400 at the top here. My center is at 388 and it's, it's rising a little bit now. And my temperature is set, is reading 371. So this is why it's really important to do a heat test, to invest in a, a heat gun, a thermal heat gun, and actually test what your heat truly is because what you're setting it at is not what it's gonna be. All right, 
So I have my, my design placed on the shirt already. So this is our Maleficent design. This is the one that was 16, 16 inches in height and 12 and a half inches wide. Okay. So here's, here's the 16 by 12, 20, 0.25 print. And this is the 13 by 12. So it was 13 tall and 12 wide. And there is our 13 by 12. 